what you have written down is very good. It's important to keep track of the negative signs here. First there was a negative from the formula, and then there was a negative, another negative from the image distance. So it's important to really take your time with that. Um, it says might as well put in a positive for the object distance too, because we're plugging in a positive object distance here. Now remember that the magnification gives you two different pieces of information. So what are the two pieces of information that we can extract from this positive 3.97? What does this tell us? Uh, well, the magnitude is greater than 1, so it's magnified. That's right. And then m is uh, greater than 0, so it is upright. Good. And does that match our prediction? Here is our predictions. Everything matches up. And again, this is a way to check ourselves in case we made an algebra mistake or a setup mistake. Everything is checking out, so it looks like we got that right. OK, good. We already know ultraviolet. Uh, virtual is always upright, and now we're confirming that with this equation over here. Okay, so this is how we solve uh, lens mirror problems. It's always, um, so one thing to do is to get in the habit of, when possible, start by making a prediction with the lens mirror chart. When possible, start by making a prediction with the lens mirror chart. Uh, this is not the way instructors usually do it, but it's a good way for a student to start. And then you try plugging in, and the crucial thing is to get the signs right. The signs were kind of easy here because they happen to be positive, but in many problems they could be negative, and that would really mess a lot of people up because they don't think to put in the negative signs. Um, you want to review how we did the algebra over here. Here's the magnification equation. So this is not the only important equation we might ever have to use. This is an important equation as well. So we might have to use uh, both of those. It's always good to start by making a nice picture. So here was a picture of his various situations. Here's the object. I should have said that was at 18 centimeters. Have we answered all the parts of the problem? Yes. OK. Now, something that you mentioned that you thought was going to be important in the course was uh, ray tracing. So we should also see how ray tracing uh, would apply here. Ray tracing is a big subject. So we might have to really finish this off uh, tomorrow, but I just want to show you how you would ray trace this. So um, can I erase what I have on the board so far? You have this in your notes? OK. So let's take a look at the section in the handout on ray tracing. Uh, so that would be page two, at the top of page two. So we'll take a look at the, the top of page two for ray tracing. <coughs> ray tracing, for some reason, is, seems to be very difficult. Uh, it's not that the steps are difficult, but there's lots of little tricks and traps, and most people just never have enough time to practice it enough. Okay. Uh, but anyway, we can start demonstrating how to do the ray tracing here. All right, so. So let's start with the first ray there, which is called the P ray. If you look, take a look at the top of the table when you're ready. And I'm going to do the ray tracing for the same problem that we just did. So this is the same problem with the object here at 18 centimeters. Are, are these problems that uh, are likely to be combined on a test? Find the values and then... And do the ray tracing. Ray tracing. Yeah. So in many problems, in fact, even on this problem, did they say to use the ray tracing? Uh, no. But it would be common on a test to, to say, solve this problem algebraically and show the ray tracing. So. so yeah, this would be a typical place that the ray tracing would come up. All right. OK. So if you take a look at the, uh, the, that table there, you can see the first ray is the P ray. Um, now let's take a look at the incoming side in the handout. It says that the incoming P ray is parallel to the axis. Is that what it says? Yeah, the incoming P ray should be parallel to the axis. Now, which side is the incoming light going to be on here, the left or the right? The left. Because that's where the object is. Remember, this is the light that's coming in towards the lens. So here's our incoming light. By the way, for a lens, it helps to draw a center line through the lens. And we imagine that all of the bending happens at the center line. That's not realistic, but this is useful for drawing pictures. Well, you know, imagine that all of the bending of the ray happens at the center of the lens. So here's the incoming P ray parallel to the axis. Okay. Now let's see what do we have about the outgoing ray. Well, you can see the outgoing ray kind of goes to the focal point. Now actually, 
Lenses and mirrors are a little confusing because there's really, uh, uh, at least a lens has two focal points. Here's the focal point on the left. But you can also draw a focal point on the right. You can say that a lens has two focal points. So here's the focal point on the left and the focal point on the right. Well, how do we know which one to use? Well, um, that is, we want to know, is the outgoing light ray going to go through which of these? Well, you can just look at the, the chart there. Uh, it depends on whether you have a converging or a diverging device. So um, what do we have here, converging or diverging? Converging. Yeah, if you check the table, this would be a converging lens. So is the outgoing light ray going to go through the focal point, or is its trace path going to go through the focal point? If we take a look at the handout here. Sorry, we should stick with the ray tracing. We have a converging lens, so the outgoing ray should go through the focal point on the same side. Uh-oh, I hope I wrote this right. That wouldn't apply for a lens. Oh, I thought this handout was so great, but this isn't working so good. It should go through the focal point. Ah, it should go through the focal point on the same side as the outgoing light. Remember that what we're talking about here is the outgoing light. Mm -hmm. Well, which side is the outgoing light going to be on, the left or the right? It's going to be on the right. Yeah. So we, the, the, uh, the ray should go through the focal point on the same side as the outgoing light. Okay. Um, that is, is it going to go through the left focal point or the right focal point? The right. All right. So now, if I had a ruler, this would be better, but I draw it like this. And, and so automatically, uh, you clearly relay this, but uh, on our uh, converging lens like we have, the left focal point, uh, 24 centimeters, automatically it's going to be the same right. uh, distance on the right. That's correct. That's right. That's a good point. Okay, okay so that gives us our outgoing ray. Uh, the other way to see that um, the ray has to look like this, though, is, remember, this is a converging lens. So do we expect the light rays to converge towards the axis or to diverge away from the axis? For a converging lens, we would expect the rays to converge towards the axis. Mm -hmm. So we would not expect the ray to look like this. Correct. This would be the case where we would have to draw a trace back through the focal point over here. But that's not what a converging lens is going to do. So even without looking at the handout, it should be pretty clear that the ray is going to be converging towards the axis and then that it can go to this focal point over here. Well, it'll take some practice to go through all the different cases there. Okay, so here we go. All right, now um, we need one more ray, because remember the image is where the outgoing light rays converge. Well, we need at least two rays to see where the outgoing light rays converge. So now we're going to do the M ray. That's the second row in the trace backs. So what does it tell us about the M ray? The M ray is actually kind of simpler. The incoming M ray just goes to the middle of the lens or mirror. So it would be best if I had a straight edge here, but I can draw. the incoming light ray going into here. Okay. And then notice that for a lens, it simply goes straight through the middle without bending. The incoming M ray just goes straight through the middle without bending. Okay. So this is what we would call the M ray. M is for middle here, and P is for coming in parallel to the axis. So here's the M. So the M-ray is, is kind of simpler. It just goes to the middle. If this was a mirror, obviously a ray can't go straight through the mirror, but the M-ray would bounce off at the same angle it came in at. If this was a mirror, if we imagine it's a mirror, it would go out like this. So the M-ray is still simpler maybe than the P-ray. Uh, it either goes straight through the middle for a lens, or it bounces off the middle of a mirror at the same angle it came in on. Uh, by the way, a common mistake is a lot of people fall into the wrong habit of thinking that all the rays should go through the focal point. But notice that the M ray has nothing to do with the focal point. It's only the P ray that goes out through the focal point. The M ray has nothing to do with the focal point. All right, now we have to figure out where the image is. Well, remember I have erased it, but the image is where the outgoing light rays or their trace backs converge. We have to decide whether the image is going to be where the outgoing rays or their trace backs converge. Well, taking a look at the picture, does it look like these outgoing light rays are going to converge? No. No. Now, actually, it's a little bit of a close call here. Without a straight edge, you might not be quite 100% sure, but I've tried to draw it so that it looks like these are getting further apart, not closer together to each other. 
So now this is a case where the image must be where the tracebacks converge. The tracebacks of whom? The tracebacks of the outgoing light rays. We want to trace back the outgoing light rays. So I'm not going to trace back this line, because this is an incoming ray. I want to trace back the outgoing rays. So this is the outgoing light ray that I can trace back like this. It's going to do the trace back with a dashed line. So this is a case where we have to use the trace backs to converge. I actually did this without talking about it in some of the previous examples. Uh, I was using trace backs without saying I was doing ray tracing. So let's draw an arrow that indicates the image here. Where is the image? No, you already got it. Good. It's always good to label that. So here's our image. 